Welcome everybody to a uh, third in our series of uh, Jumpstart Your Job Search. Today we're focusing on cover letters, which is uh, like many, many people, one of my least favorite things to write, but has become one of my favorite topics to present on and to work with people on. Um, I probably because people struggle with it some and it's, uh, it's uh, gratifying to help people break out a little of that uh, hating it mold and, and get to a more comfortable place with cover letters. Um, let me go ahead and share my screen and get us started. So uh, cover letters, making the case for hiring you. Uh, is our title. And um, I'm Christine Valenza Shin. I'm an alum of the college, class of 84, and I'm associate dean for Beyond Barnard. And um, I was going to say something. What was I going to say? Oh, I was going to say welcome uh, to people who are returning. Um, and then uh, we got a lot of uh, an increase in registrations over the weekend because another reminder went out. So if you're new to the series, welcome. And uh, several of you have asked via email. The sessions are being recorded and they are posted the follow, uh, tomorrow or Friday uh, on the alumni um, the alumni site, you'll get a follow up email with the link. Um, so you can always catch up on anything you missed or re listen if you would like. Um, and as well, a copy of the slides is posted. So you don't need to take uh, crazy notes either, unless that's uh, how you process things. So let's get started. Uh, here's our summer imagery, our summer colloquium, part of this larger conversation that we hold during the summer for both students and alumni keep you engaged and hopefully meet you where you are in terms of your career path and what's going on uh, with job searches and otherwise. And our nature image, our Zen moment image where I take a deep breath and encourage you to do the same. Uh, I always know I never feel like it's officially summer until New York City schools are out of session, which they finally are. And so this, uh, you know, and people start their beach vacation. So this seemed like good, good imagery to relax us, remind us that it's summer, even though we're talking about things that can be stress inducing. So uh, today we're talking about cover letters. We discussed resumes last week and the um, final in this sort of little mini sequence is LinkedIn profiles. Um, these three things together are the tools you use to present yourself throughout the job search. So um, that's where we've been, where we're going and, and where we are today is cover letters. So we're gonna uh, go over some basics. I'm going to give you a formula. Um, that's just what it is, a formula. It's one way of approaching this, it's not the only way, um, but um, often people find do find it easier and you've probably developed over the years your own formula for cover letters so to your mind might look fairly similar to yours or it might introduce some new elements that that could be helpful um, but then we're also going to spend some time looking at some different approaches i think cover letters are an area where you can mix it up especially if you're not getting um great results from the ones you are sending out so um we'll look at a couple of different ways of uh, approaching the letter and then finally we'll do a little bit of practice um, so you can start generating some of these ideas for yourself and as always, we'll uh, leave some time at the end for questions and answers. So uh, some basics about cover letters, a couple of the key ways of thinking about cover letters and key ways that I tend to describe them as I'm working with people on this. So one way of thinking of it is a bridge between the job description and your resume. Um, so um, it's an opportunity similar to when we, um, uh, look next week at the about section on your LinkedIn profile. It's a way of you being able to frame how someone uh, views your resume um, and whether somebody reads your cover letter first and then your resume or reads your resume and comes back to the cover letter. Um, it can be a helpful framing device and, and so that that sometimes people find that as a helpful way of thinking about it. We're going to talk a lot about showing, not telling. Um, and to me, the resume is a telling document. You know, uh, we looked a little bit about how you can show some achievements and things like that. But basically, that's the telling document with all of the details and the chronology and the specific things you did. But the cover letter is a showing document where you have an opportunity to sort of show yourself in action, um, talking about why you want the job and, and how you'll be good at it, what specific things you'll bring to it. And 
it doesn't always have to be used for this, but if you uh, feel that you have perceived or real weaknesses in your work history, it could be a gap, it could be um, a change in course that took place at some point, or it could just be that you've had quite a varied path and, and you need to sort of pull that together and show the through line. Um, but there could be, you know, various other things. Um, and you're the concisely and positively is, is the key here. You're not going to spend the whole cover letter talking about this, but we'll look at a couple of ways you can address some of these possible um, red flags. But again, I want to repeat, that's not a, an, an essential element of a cover letter, but it, it does come up sometimes uh, given people's individual work histories. So you're going to hear a lot from a lot of people you probably already have is that nobody reads cover letters. Um, and so don't bother. We're here to present the counter argument. It is absolutely true that cover letters are far less required than they used to be and that many, many people, many, many people hiring for jobs don't read them or just skim them very quickly. It's primarily because I would argue that cover letters are really boring. Um, they tend to not be customized. They tend to say sort of generic things and so there's just not a lot of information to be gleaned from it. Um, our philosophy, our strategy that we try and teach here at Beyond Barnard is that um, they cover letters actually represent a really good opportunity to set yourself apart. Um, so, and you know, you the ability to write well is always appreciated. And, and obviously, you know, if you are applying to a position that requires strong writing, they become a, a writing sample, if it were, uh, as it were. So, um, and the reality is that there are plenty of employers out there who do value cover letters. And so, and you never know who's gonna be reading it, but if you do get it in front of somebody who values a cover letter, it could be um, writing a good cover letter, a customized, interesting cover letter that, that sounds like you, that makes you sound like a, a, a real person and a valuable worker uh, could, could be a key to getting that interview. Um, and, you know, they are, if they're optional, whether they're optional or required, they are a whole extra page um, to customize, to give more information and, and optimize that uh, chance that you will get the interview. So a couple of do's, uh, we definitely with, with very few exceptions, you wanna keep it to one page. Uh, you really wanna work on how can you uh, distill your message down so that it fits nicely in one page. Um, back to what we said about people not wanting to read cover letters, a particularly dense or long cover letter is going to reinforce that notion of somebody not wanting to read it. So a, a more concise one um, that leaves some white, leaves some space between paragraphs and isn't in teeny tiny font will uh, be more inviting. So. So um, the exception to that, I mean, occasionally cover, you're asked in a cover letter to do a lot more than, you know, there's specifics, you know, we want to hear about this and that. And, you know, at that point, you could certainly go over one page, but that's pretty, pretty unusual, uh, mostly instructions if they're there are to write a cover letter. Um, I don't want to, I'm not going to go through each and every bullet because I know you all can read. The third bullet though, this is, uh, this is something I learned a few years back from our, our, uh, our new Dean at the time, AJ Ehrenstein. Um, this is for the skimmers. If you put the, so it's very, you know, most people at least customize a cover letter enough to put two to three body paragraphs. What it means is that when somebody's skimming the cover letter, they will see their name. I paused for just a second, said my internet uh, connection was weak. I will give a little caveat uh, because of the sort of power demands. Um, wireless has been slightly spotty, so I'm hoping it holds through till two o'clock. But if I suddenly get bumped out, please stay in the room and I'll be back as quickly as I can. Um, so back to the skimming, when somebody's skimming it, if they see the name of their organization in all four or five paragraphs, they're going to know that you didn't just sort of perfunctorily um, customize it, but that might be enough of a, enough to pique their interest to make them actually read it. Um, we're going to talk a lot about stories. We're talking about very short stories. Um, you could also think of them as sort of uh, vivid examples. The key, you know, are, are very specific examples. We're trying to appeal to, you know, stories appeal to the human brain. They're a great way to sort of hook people in. And it goes back to what I was saying about showing. Uh, we want stories that show you in action, um, doing the things that, um, that, doing the job well that, that they're looking for. 
and then obviously, you know, get the details right. Um, the Barnard University is a, a thing that crops up from time to time when we're screening applicants. And I'm actually in the, we're in the middle of a couple job searches here at Beyond Barnard. And, uh, you know, the, when we go do that initial sort of yes, maybe, and no, the, the people who end up in the no pile, or I, I just, you know, moved somebody in the no pile this morning because they, um, had the wrong job title. You know, they obviously had applied to something in HR as well as something at Beyond Barnard. But again, it was it's a, a, a position that requires attention to detail. So that kind of um, uh, error right off the bat in an application is a is a no. So okay. And a couple of uh, FAQs questions that seem to come up a lot. If you have information about, if, you, if you're pretty certain, either the title um, or the person, you know, if sometimes a, a person is actually listed in the posting, that's unusual, but often it will say reporting to X title. Um, so you could do a little digging if you're fairly confident that of, of who's in that title, you could address it if you want. Um, but generic is fine. Um, and our preferred generic as opposed to to whom it may concern or dear sir slash madam or madam slash sir um, is dear hiring manager. It kind of covers all of eventualities. It covers if it's somebody at human resources that's receiving the um, the application and, and going through that certainly covers them, but it also covers, you know, for instance, myself, I'm hiring for a particular position within our department. I am the hiring manager in this particular job search. So it's a good generic to use. Um, the name dropping comes up, you know, there's certain industries you can probably make an educated guess which ones that that sort of uh, where name dropping is going to be helpful um, in media and entertainment. Um, there's some other areas, you know, where um, referencing who you found out about the job or somebody you know who works there can be helpful. Otherwise, you know, be use your discretion. Um, but as the first point says, if, if somebody did actually refer you, um, you could you could mention that that's a good thing. To, to throw into that first paragraph um, so that they know that this came from someone they know. Um, and then uh, again, as cover letters have waned in popularity and aren't always required, sometimes people are tempted to make the email their cover letter. Um, you certainly, if there's, if there's no cover letter required or if they say to do it that way, you absolutely can, but definitely keep it short. Um, but if they do either give the option of a cover letter or a required cover letter, instead of doing it in the email, you can go ahead and make it either part of an overall document or um, a separate document that you upload to the system. Great. So those were some basics. And now we'll go into a, a bit of a formula, um, give you some specifics. All right, so uh, the formula I'm going to use is four paragraphs. Um, I think you could potentially squeeze in a fifth paragraph, but you know the goal is to try and keep things relatively short. And the way it's going to look on the page is a relatively short first paragraph introduction, a relatively short conclusion, and the sort of you know uh, most of the real estate is going to be taken up by those two body paragraphs, which we'll get to in a moment. So a classic, you know, a classic but boring opener is please accept my application for the position as posted on your website or as seen on LinkedIn or you can refer to. It's a you know fairly standard thing. It it can be helpful uh, to the person on the other end to know you know that they're looking at the right you know. Uh, right job description, the right, and, and also they may be keeping track of where the applicants are coming from. The key thing you want to do here in this first paragraph is connect yourself and specifically your skills and experiences to the job or the organization. So you need to either from the job description or from their website or just your general knowledge of the company, you want to distill their main mission or goal and uh, connect yourself to it. So uh, the yellow uh, italics give a couple of examples of how, how you might do that. So I'll give you a second to read those over. Again, it's a little formulaic, um, but I, I like this formula of um, not just saying I'm eager to bring my experience and skills, but 
a little, you know, a little preview of what you're going to talk about, that you've got the combination of clinical experience and analytical skills or analytic skills, um, or in the second example, research skills and teaching experience. So that, that little formula of what, it, which, what key experiences you're bringing, what key skills are you bringing, gives a little preview of what you're going to go into detail about, uh, makes it a little less generic, um, but also doesn't waste space in the first paragraph, which often gets skipped over, um, you know, getting into, into full details. All right, so then moving on to the second paragraph, which is a body paragraph. So again, you don't have to do it this way, but one in a standard job description where they lay out job responsibilities in one section and then qualifications in another, this is just one way of approaching that. So you would look over that list of key responsibilities, pick the two, some combination could be one to three related that um, seem um, very important to them, either because they come right at the top or they repeat them over and over again. So you want it, to, it's a combination of what seems to be important to them, what are they trying to convey about the job, and then is a good match for your skills and experiences. You don't have to, definitely in your cover letter, you're not trying to match every single thing that they're asking for, but you're trying to hone in on those, that combination of things that seem important to the job and a good match for. Um, your background. Um, probably the the first, if the second, if not the first thing that I edit, if I edit a cover letter, is the topic sentence. Um, for many many people are taught to make the topic sentence based on their resume. You know, so so in the so a lot of students approach it as um, as a, an anthropology major at Barnard. I have you know so that it's they're they're leading with something from their resume. Um, and then they go into, in my internship at, you know, and then they use the internship or another entry from their resume as the thing. This is one simple way to get away from rewriting your resume, uh, which is one of the key key things here. You're trying to use the new space of the cover letter, not to rewrite your resume, but to add new information. Taking the topic sentence from the job description, you know, choosing a, a, a skill set um, or an experience set of experiences that um, you can pull from and making that the focal point. You then obviously uh, can draw from your resume, draw from your work experience, um, but you want to do it again in more of that narrative um, narrative way. So you're looking for examples or stories that aren't in your resume. Um, part of the example might be there as an opportunity to give a little more detail or to give a more vivid um, example. <laughs> so I, I gave a, a, an example there. It's not the most compelling story in the world, but it's a, it's a story. Um, you get an image, this person is projecting an image of them in action. And then in a second sentence, talking about the result of that, right? Again, a narrative, you know, what happened as a result of that and this idea that, you know, they were able to, with this innovation or using this technique, were able to influence, you know, other people in their, um, in their organization. Third paragraph, then uh, if you want, uh, you could choose from the qualifications list. You don't have to do it strictly requirements and qualifications. It's just one way of, of again, making sure that you're incorporating different parts of the job search um, into your cover letter. Um, there's other ways of doing this. Sometimes uh, somebody will do their, their uh, the second paragraph might be about hard skills um, and the third paragraph might be a soft about soft skills, or it could be as simple as there's two main skill sets needed or sets of experiences needed for this. And you're going to spend second paragraph talking about one third paragraph talking about the other. So, um, but again, you know, uh, this, sometimes people find it helpful to be this formulaic. So um, here I gave an example of what that topic sentence based on a job description might look like. So all you're doing is prefacing your examples and your stories with, here's what I'm going to talk about in this paragraph. I'm adept at managing multiple projects at once while meeting tight deadlines. I'm going to assume based on this sentence that managing multiple projects, projects at once, meeting tight deadlines uh, were in, in the job description. And so they're using that, that phrasing to say, hey, I'm good at this. And now I'm going to give you some stories and some examples that show that I'm right, that I am good at this. 
the qualification section is uh, in the final bullet point is a good place to focus on what we call transferable skills. So especially if you're applying for something that is a shift for you or a little bit out of your wheelhouse, um, quali the qualifications list, you know, tends to be at least part of it tends to be those good worker qualities, you know, just, uh, you know, being professional, being discreet, being on time, um, you know, just things that are sort of good across all sorts of roles across all sorts of jobs. And so um, it's worth taking a look at that and, and thinking about can I tell some stories about my transferable skills and, and show how they could work in this new job. Okay. Um, so I've talked a lot about stories and I wanted to give you some examples. Again, this is something I'll often do with working with somebody one on one or, or you know, we'll sort of work, work, our team will sort of work people through this in a workshop. Um, so here's some, here's some possible stories to tell about where you might be able to illustrate these strengths of yours. The second bullet is uh, the third bullet. Uh, I call that the epiphany moment, and that that can be really helpful. Actually, a lot of these story prompts, just as a note, um, if you don't use them in the cover letter, or even if you do, can also be story prompts, examples that you can um, prepare and think about for an interview, um, where you also want to be, you know, telling stories, giving specific examples of you doing different aspects of the job. Um, and that final bullet. Um, it's a little tricky territory to talk about a mistake, um, but it could be relevant in a cover letter. Um, but this, it, when, when we talk about interviewing in a, in a few weeks, this often comes up in interviews. It's a pretty popular interview question. It's sort of a variation on the tell us about a weakness. You know, it will be tell us about a time uh, you made a mistake or tell us about a time something went wrong and how did you handle that? So. And then finally, we get to the fourth paragraph, which again will be, you know, fairly short, um, similar to the first paragraph. And you're doing much the same way. You're sort of pulling back from the specifics and you are reconnecting what you've been talking about to the um, mi overall mission or goal of a particular team or division or the organization as a whole. Um, so basically, you're writing something similar to the first paragraph, but in a, you know, using different language or using a different example. Um, and then a classic closing line is um, basically basically what you're saying in, in this example here is you're going to want to talk to me, right? But you're saying that less assertively, but you're still sort of confidently saying, hey, let's talk more. There's, I've got more information. I've got more, um, you know, um, more to tell you about this. So, so that's how you can end. So that's the formula part of it. Um, and now I want to talk about some different approaches. So as we talked about last week, the goal of a resume and, and also the goal of a cover letter is to get you an interview. So in this case, it's often what you're trying to get to is stage one of the interviews, which is often a phone screen or nowadays it could take place on Zoom. Um, um, so the idea is um, if you're not getting a lot of interview, you know, if you're applying steadily to things and you're not getting, not, not getting interview requests, um, trying some different approaches um, can be a good way to um, mix that up. So I'll give you a little caveat. Some of these are a little out there um, and I'm not, uh, not saying you should, uh, that any that you need to do any or all of these, but we're trying to think a little bit out of the box. Um, and I sort of pulled these from a variety of sources. So let's take a look at some of them. So the first sort of variation on this is to skip that somewhat boring introduction that we talked about, you know, please accept my application for, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and instead um, open with a story. So I've got two examples on this slide and two on the other. So take a second to read these, not critically, just open your mind to the possibility of there's a, a more interesting way to open your letter. So when we say opening, I mean opening, you know, the whole point of doing this would be to make this the very first sentence 
um, very first sentences of the letter. The whole point, the whole idea is that it's a, it's a lead, it's a hook, trying to get their attention, trying to get them to read your cover letter. Doesn't mean you can't add a couple of sentences to each of these to fill out that introductory um, paragraph. Uh, you absolutely can, or you could, uh, you know, from there go into the, into the body of your letter. Right. Um, but again, story prompts here, you know, um, looking at a career thread um, in the first one, taking a very specific thing that, you know, uh, a boss said about a key quality, you know, these are, these are possibilities. I wouldn't copy any one of these if they don't describe you, um, um, but um, it can be helpful and it's one of the things we'll do in, in a, a, towards the end, you know, it can be helpful to think about how you could use this to grab their attention. And let me give you two more examples on the next page. I hesitated over including this uh, last December one, but I decided to go for it. So uh, I love the, the uh, title of this article. I got these from how to write a cover letter that doesn't just recap your resume. So that's definitely a, a theme throughout today's workshop is don't rewrite your resume. Um, so um, that's where I drew these examples from. And uh, as I said, I hesitated over including this very salesy one, but I thought, you know, um, um, it, it being that um, sort of direct, um, can feel a little off-putting, but I, I wanted to include it because it's worth thinking about. It's, and especially for particular roles, you know, roles that would reward, you know, so certainly a sales role very much would reward this kind of attitude, this kind of communication. Uh, so it's something to think about. Um, if it, if a particular role you think would re reward that more direct, more competitive approach, then something to consider, or if the vibe you're getting um, or the messages you're getting from a particular company or a particular team and from the job description, you know, this might be a good way of approaching it. Again, you're not copying this word for word, but thinking about how could you adapt or do something similar in your opening. And then I think this last example um, about not finding the title community manager, it, it's, um, I think it's an interesting way to frame it and also could be helpful. Again, we've talked about this a few times. If you're making a shift in role or a shift in field or a complete change, this is a way of framing the fact that you're going to be talking a lot about uh, transferable skills or possibly talking about where you've done the work, not necessarily in your traditional work history, but you've used it in your volunteer experience or your academic experience. So, so just a couple of variations, um, thinking about opening with that narrative hook, right? Another possibility is, okay, sorry. Um, there's something called a T format cover letter, um, sometimes referred to as a specific needs cover letter. And so basically what you hear, what you do is the main part of the cover letter, it looks visually quite different from a normal cover letter, um, is you put two columns to directly target key points from the job listing. And this also um, is a slightly different way of drawing directly from the job listing. So it ends up looking something like this. So you have this very brief intro and very brief conclusion, but in the middle, the left-hand column takes, in this case, four key parts from a job description. And then the right-hand side is how you meet, meet or exceed that expectation or requirement. So it's very targeted, it's, it's quantified. Um, this, I, this is a, a, a type of cover letter. There were a lot of articles about this, I don't know, maybe five or six years ago, like this is how you should write your cover letter. Um, and anecdotally, I, I knew of a couple people who used this and, and got a really positive response. Again, the idea here is you're mixing things up a little, uh, picture somebody going through, you know, scrolling through a bunch of cover letters. This one's definitely gonna jump out as something different and, and they may hate that, they may love that, they may be somewhere in between, but chances are that they'll read it potentially with a little bit more depth than, um, than they might otherwise have done. Just making, I feel like I skipped something, but let's see. Okay. Um, so then this is a full letter. Um, 
I just want to say a couple caveats about that before you start reading it. Um, it comes from a site I mentioned last week, Ask a Manager, and she will every once in a while publish cover letters that she thinks are, again, sort of outside of the box or, you know, do a particularly good job of capturing who you are. Um, her, what she does to anonymize this is she'll sort of plug in other names for the organizations. She usually draws them from pop culture. I'm not quite sure what this one is drawing from. I know she likes to, um, um, there's various various pop culture references that she'll draw examples from. Um, so take a look at this one. You know, the heading is correct. It's a unique narrative voice and a, a fairly different approach to how this would work. So if you actually uh, follow the link and go to the site of this letter, it engendered quite a, love, a lively debate in the commentary. Um, and you know, one of the key points is that, uh, again, you would never copy this directly or even imitate it closely. This is an example of this unique person in this unique situation choosing to approach this in a, a much different way than a cover letter is, is um, often uh, approached. And, you know, there's a risk here. Uh, somebody might find this, you know, really off-putting, but other people might find it intriguing. Um, and, you know, I think one of the things that's interesting is it's a, a, a she, I believe it's, it was a she, has a fairly lively and original way of capturing what makes a good assistant and why it's a good match for her. But I think also finds an interesting way to work in her background that she uh, looks like she was a PhD student and a faculty member. Um, you know, so she's saying, yes, I did this in the background, but here's why I want to do this new thing now um, while still remaining in a, in a university environment. So. Okay. And then finally, uh, this is an old, oldie but goodie from the uh, Harvard Business Review. You'll see the link down there. Uh, and it was in an article, you know, written that was called the best cover letter I ever got. So it's the brevity as the attention grabber. So take a quick look at this one. So really it's funny, it's three sentences, but it really is only one sentence, right? Because the the first, the the opening line and the closing line are relatively standard and kind of throwaway. But basically what this person has done is distilled what they bring to the job into really a single sentence. Um, it's a little, it's definitely, um, it, it does the opposite of what I was talking about in the in the formula I discussed. It doesn't give a great amount of detail. You don't necessarily get a vivid picture of the person in action, but I'm, I'm going to guess that uh, what they drew from the job description were these, you know, three key things, um, you know, experience, skills, um, overall good worker quality and the great eye, eye for detail. Um, it's the brevity though, it's not the actual content that's the attention grabber, it's the brevity, you know? So um, so I thought I would throw that in there as a, an example too. So let's do a little practice, okay? So what I'm gonna have you do is take a minute to write your own version of either the opening with a story, and I put up one of those examples I already showed you before to prompt your memory. Um, I, you don't have to model it on it, it's just reminding you of what that looks like. Um, or the three sentence cover letter we just looked at. And again, you, you, uh, you could leave off the first and third sentences and just do that middle section. How would you distill all of your experience into a single sentence or a sentence or two in that sort of middle? middle paragraph. Um, so take a second, pick one of these and uh, you can um, jot this down for yourself, but I'm also going to invite you to share it in the chat if you're willing. Um, it's always great to see some examples. So I'm going to be quiet for a moment. Um, I'm actually going to stop sharing for a moment. So let me give you a chance to look at the directions one more time. I'm going to stop sharing for a second so I can see the chat um, and then we'll come back and finish up with a few final thoughts. And really do this. When I do these workshops in person, 
way back in the before times, I, I make people actually take a piece of paper out and do this. So I can't come into your homes and force you to do this, but I encourage you to, to take a minute. Feel free to take another minute or so to, to try out either of these. And if anybody's willing to cut and paste it into um, the chat, you can either send it to everyone or if you prefer, um, you could send it just to me and I'll read it out loud. somebody be brave and share their share their draft in the meantime there's a question uh, someone asked does the three line cover letter leave room or reader attention for a more detailed resume if the work experience is relevant yes absolutely i think that you know probably the reason the person did this was to say hey look at my resume everything you need to know is there um, but and so i'm just going to give you this very brief distillation um, and try and grab your attention by being super short Okay, I'm going to, I, I encourage you, if you, uh, if you want to um, share, um, please do. Um, if you need a few more minutes, I'm going to go back to uh, the PowerPoint and finish that up. And then um, we'll open it up to, um, I can read out loud any examples if people have chosen to share them or just do a general Q&A. So let's go back to... Hold on one second. Sorry, just needed to reload this. All right, let's try this one more time. We're going to screen share. Great. So uh, if you are uh, reluctant to uh, share this or, you know, do this exercise right now in the moment, uh, definitely give it a try on your own time. Right. Oops. Sorry. I forgot to cut out the rough draft of my final slide. Um, so just a couple of concluding points here. Um, we talk you know, use the familiar term return on investment. Is it worth taking the time to customize your cover letter? And, you know, basically what I've been saying throughout the session is a resounding yes, that um, taking the time to make a cover letter sound like you um, and to tailor the information you share to the specifics of the job description is uh it's, it's definitely worth the time. It's quality over quantity. You can churn out a bunch of generic cover letters, um, but taking the time to uh, make it customized, make it sound like a real person is, is writing it, an individual with, with you know, bringing good strengths to the position um, is definitely worth the time. I mean, it's not worth weeks and weeks and delaying, you know, I'm talking about, you know, taking, taking a little extra time, uh, you know, not just sending off the usual, but taking a little extra time to customize it. So maybe, you know, maybe 
just when you've got some time to do this and, and, and get it in, but it generally will be a, a good payoff. Um, large, cover letters can be hard in general. Customizing them is a challenge. Um, and especially if you are um, trying some of the new things that you heard here today, either going with a more narrative focus, um, shifting around that topic sentence so it doesn't come straight from your resume, um, all of the, you know, trying the different things both in the formula I laid out as well as some of these, uh, you know, other ways of doing it. It's going to be time consuming initially, but it should get easier um, as you send these out. Um, you certainly can duplicate parts of letters for similar positions. So if you're applying for a lot of similar things that are asking for a lot of similar qualities, it should be relatively easy to use the same stories and examples. And then just, you know, you can tweak them slightly to show different things or to include relevant detail, you know, details that are more relevant to that specific thing. Um, and similar to last week, how we talked about uh, creating an everything resume document or a master resume document, you can do something similar for actually both cover letters and interview prep, which is to, you know, if you've written these up nicely, you know, cut and paste them from the letters you're sending out, put them all in one place. Um, so that, you, again, you're not starting from scratch telling a, a, a two sentence story, you know, each time. So, um, and, you know, so, and different stories can show different things, you know, so the same story could be used to show attention to detail and working on, you know, juggling multiple projects. It also could show general organization ability or clear communication. You know, there's a lot of a lot of your stories um, and examples can be used to illustrate different qualities. So, um, and and then just a final plug for what we talked about at last section here is that if your typical letter, um, whether it's your typical letter or the tip, sort of more typical formula I put in the first half of the um, presentation, if that's not getting you interviews. If that's not getting you interviews, then experiment with some of these different approaches. You don't have to completely convert to the, um, you know, the narrative hook or the three line um, um, cover letter or the T format. You don't have to make that your new thing, but especially where um, um, if you're applying for something that's a bit long shot anyway, um, you know, you, it could be good to experiment with it, see if you get any, um, you know, any more feedback. Another time I think to experiment with some of these different formats is if a company or a job description comes off as, uh, it is, if a company sort of either directly or indirectly talks about being an instructor or doing things in a different way. You know, so I talked a lot about the sort of classic job descriptions where they lay out the requirements and they lay out the qualifications, but I'm sure you're, well, you may have seen, you know, there's, there's different styles of job description. So there's it's some of your smaller startup, your edgier kind of companies, places that are trying to sort of mix things up, whether it's in terms of what they're doing as their business or doing um, in terms of recruiting. If they're mixing things up, that's kind of an invitation for you to mix things up and to try a different approach as well. So again, if you're applying to an innovative or unusual kind of company or organization, um, that could also be a, a good time to try some of these different approaches. So um, as usual, just a little preview of, of possible next steps for you. Um, we've got uh, five more topics coming up. Uh, I'm going to take a break next week and my uh, esteemed colleague, Lindsay Granger Weaver is going to talk to you about your LinkedIn profile and um, some suggestions for that and how it fits into your job search. I'll be back to talk about networking the following week and you can see the rest of the topics as well. Um, again, you're welcome to make an advising appointment. Uh, during the series or after this over. If you have actively used Handshake or had an account created for you recently, um, you know, you can go ahead and directly make an appointment with myself or anybody else on the advising and programs team. If you haven't been on Handshake um, or um, if you try and log on and it says that you're um, that it, it doesn't recognize you, et cetera, um, definitely you can email Beyond Barnard. And uh, we do two things when we get that email. We'll, uh, we'll check on whether you do have an account on Handshake and what email it's it's matched to, and then say those instructions. Uh, the biggest key thing when you go on to Handshake is you do not need to have your uni as an alum. There's a it makes it seem like you do because the sign in here says to ask for uni. You absolutely um, have to have that. In fact, you shouldn't use a school affiliated uh, email. Um, you should just use your whatever personal or professional email you use. So, but all of that is fine. Um, 
skip all of that angst by directly emailing beyondbarnard at barnard.edu. And thanks and questions. I'm gonna stop sharing if anybody shared anything in the chat. Ooh, look, either questions or examples. Okay, let's take a look. Okay. <coughs> okay, here's a here's a, I'm going to read out some of these examples, and then I'll some. We got some time here, so uh, add five minutes to distill a complicated tax point into simple language. First time reading the tax issue, no idea what it meant. Second time, I saw a tiny opening. I continued to pound away under the deadline and found my way. I reworded it into a simple explanation anyone can understand. I don't give up when things are hard. When I don't understand, I keep working on it to make sure others will. Ah, that's awesome. I'm gonna read that one more time. I like that. I had five minutes to distill a complicated tax point into simple language. First time reading the tax issue, no idea what it meant. Second time, I saw a tiny opening. I continued to pound away under the deadline and found my way. I reworded it into a simple explanation anyone could understand. And now she steps back and sort of does a little bit big picture. I don't give up when things are hard. When I don't understand, I keep working at it to make sure others will. Good, I like that. That's a really good example. Um, okay, somebody else sent me. Uh, this is my attempt at the narrative opening. While teaching a course on the history of Buddhism at UVA, I witnessed many students grappling with the boundaries of their own religious beliefs, often leading to serious mental dissonance or challenging the material I taught. What resulted in these seriously uncomfortable situations was the development of a robust discourse focused on questions and self-reflection. Uh, I like that too. Again, we're, you know, a lot of those things that you mentioned, you know, um, the, you know, how you are as a teacher and the, the, the way you try and approach your work or encourage, you know, that all could be done in a very standard way, but this, this is very nicely done in a narrative um, opening, even just, you know, and, 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 and simple things make it narrative. It's, you know, starting with the specifics, you know, it's starting with what was I teaching, where was I teaching it, and then what did I see, and giving some of these, just, you know, descriptions of what the students were dealing with. So, great. Thank you all for sharing these. These are great. Um, let me see, somebody here attached. Let me see if it opens. I don't think it's opening for me. Let me see. Okay. Oh, here we go. I'm just going to read the one, the opening here, but uh, this, so this is an opening paragraph. I have a long history with music. It has at times helped to define me get through rough paths and been an unending source of wonder. In my master's program, I did a lightning talk on how Spotify builds the Discover Weekly playlist. I then expanded on this research with data analytics and information visualization. I have a keen interest in what makes certain music popular and in discovering new or found music in all genres. With that in mind, I would like to apply for the senior, pro senior manager product insights personalization position in Boston, Mass. I like that. Yeah, you guys are great. At, I, I knew you would be great at this. That's why I was pushing you to share them. Um, so again, it's that it's that more personal. I have a long history with music. It's it's intriguing. It's like, what does she mean? Why is she talking about that in a cover letter? Um, and then um, you know, and then gives a little bit more information about that, and then transitions to um, some more specifics. So excellent. Thank you for sharing that. And let's see what else, if we've got anything else. Do, 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 do. Um, you might add it if we have to. Oh, I see what you're saying. Uh, so this is a follow-up to the question about the, um, the three sentence I mis misread it, was can you then use the, say, the space you've saved on the cover letter to write a longer resume? Um, I, it's not exactly a quid pro quo, but definitely if you've been nice and brief in the cover letter, I think that that sort of sets them up to take a little bit more time potentially on your resume. I think they're going to be 
not only intrigued by the brevity, but intrigued by, um, you know, just the approach and, and, and just sort of thinking, oh, this is an interesting person. And so it might make them more um, willing. I still would, you know, I wouldn't go on and on in your resume. We talked last week about sticking to a page or two pages if possible. So, um, but yeah, I think that, you know, uh, people appreciate brevity um, in a cover letter. So um, that would be good. Um, okay, so we have a question about accessing. So what happens is you should get a follow-up email from Alumni Relations either tomorrow or Friday um, that thanks you and asks you for feedback and then sends you a link. <laughs> Hey, sorry about that. I got bumped out for a minute. I am back. I think we're wrapping up here. Um, but as long as my wireless um, uh, doesn't bump me out again, or my computer. Uh, can one reuse the link for today for future sessions? Yeah. It's And I'm back again, so I'm learning my lesson here. I'm going to just say goodbye because uh, I keep getting bumped off as the electric grid is uh, tapped. Um, the audio cut off. Can you please put in chat? Uh, nope, no, no new link. Same link. Uh, same, same Zoom link for every session. Let me same Zoom link for every session. Hi, everybody. Thank you for coming. Sorry about the little technical disruptions at the end here.